introduction ay kasama rin po natin ngayong umaga para sa ating webinar. Welcome to our webinar entitled Preparing for the New Normal in Journalism Education. So this two-day webinar is a project of Journalism Studies Association of the Philippines, JSAP. So it is organized by University of the Philippines Diliman, Department of Journalism. It is co-organized by Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Department of Communication, and University of Santo Tomas Journalism Department. So we would also like to thank our partners from LIFE, Barangay Hub, Internews Philippines, and USAID. This project is also supported by Department of Education Divisions of Manila. Thank you to all the participating schools, organization, and agencies for supporting this initiative. So good morning po sa lahat ng ating fellow journalism educators na nanonood po sa ating Facebook live stream, dyan po sa ating close group. Good morning po, magandang buhay. By the way, I am Angelica Marie Simpao, the Project Coordinator of JSOP and Program Chair of BS Development Communication of Holy Cross College, Pampanga. And I will be your moderator for this webinar. So I will not keep you waiting. I know you are all excited to meet our speakers and learn a lot from them. Let us use this webinar to gain a lot of knowledge and to innovate our ways in teaching journalism. To formally welcome us all here today, we have the lead organizer of this webinar, the convener of UP Fact Checking and JSOP. She is also the chair of Department of Journalism of University of the Philippines, Diliman. Let us all welcome Professor Lucia Tangi. Good morning, ma'am. Hello, good morning. Magandang umaga. Asa mga kababayan ko sa mga Ilocos region na imbag na bigat yung amin. Apo. Okay, uh, maybe just to uh, give you a little background about this webinar. Uh, right after the lockdown in mid-March, um, I, I was so, you know, I was so sad and I was so worried about the future of journalism education. You see, unlike uh, other courses, you know, you can teach math, uh, history, and other subjects probably online. But uh, journalism is quite different because we have to pass on certain skills to our students. So uh, I, I was just reimagining uh, how can we teach the inverted pyramid to empty chairs and empty classrooms? And then I was also thinking, how can we uh, teach our students to seek the truth, to tell the truth? in a world that is um, in a virtual world when everything is virtual, virtual party, virtual press corps. So sabi ko, napaka-challenging ng hinaharap natin as journalism educators. So I came up with this uh, concept of this webinar. And fortunately, a number of journalism educators also uh, supported this uh, concept. And I, I'm very much grateful to the uh, to uh, Professor Ben Domingo has been supporting me from the beginning of the conceptualization of this webinar. Uh, saraming, maraming salamat, uh, Sir Ben, for your support. And uh, so, and also, I was so overwhelmed when, as soon as we started posting our um, poster for this webinar, within 24 hours, we got 1,500 registrations. Na nagulat kami. And to be honest, you know, the, the Zoom capacity of uh, UP is only 500. Tapos 1,500 na yung registration. So we were all, um, we, were all we, 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 we were all wondering how we can proceed with the webinar. No? But fortunately, with the help of our partners, uh, especially live and Barangay Hub, uh, we were able to address most of these technical problems. And as of uh, Monday, I'm so happy that the total number of uh, registered participants has reached 2,900. Now, this is actually the biggest, kumbaga, the biggest gathering of journalism educators in the history of the Philippines. No? Um, first time lang ito. And uh, sana tuloy, tuloy to. we hope that this is just the first webinar. We hope that we, we can organize more webinars for journalism educators. Once again, welcome to the webinar. Salamat po. 
Thank you so much, Professor Lucia Tangi, for inspiring our educators to move towards excellence for this new normal in journalism education. So I hope our participants are all excited to start this webinar. We have um, journalism educators from Luzon, Visayas, and even in Mindanao. So good morning, po. Welcome to our journalism um, webinar for the new normal in journalism education. So without further ado, um, let us now start the discussion. It is my honor to introduce to you our speakers today. So our first speaker is an alumnus of University of the Philippines Diliman College of Mass Communication and a recipient of the first Glory Awards in 2017. This award was given to distinguished alumni for their contribution to their chosen field. He is the CEO and founder of Puma Publications and currently the anchor of Big Story and the Chiefs of One News. He is also the editor-in-chief of Business World. Fellow educators, everyone, let us all welcome our first speaker, Sir Robbie Alampay. Good morning, Sir Robbie. Hi, good morning. Uh, magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my, ano, I'm, I'm trying to turn on my video. Naka-off daw ako yung video from your end. I think you have okay. to turn me on. Let's um, wait for the UP Computer Center to enable Sir Robbie Alampay's video. Okay. Okay, yeah. can you see me? Uh, magandang yes, araw po, po sa kanila lahat. Uh, nakikita nyo naman dito sa, ano ba to? Sa, in, my, uh, in, my, in my background, it's, uh, it's, it's Puma Podcast. That's my, that's my startup. We do, uh, the company is Puma Public Productions. Uh, but we sh we're starting to do podcasts. You know? we're, um, I'm sure you're all uh, well aware of this. Um, but it's, it, it, goes to, it's, it just goes to my latest thing. But uh, just to recap, first of all, just to correct, I'm no longer editor-in-chief of uh, Business World. I used to be. Gaya po ng nabanggit, I am also still anchoring a couple of things for One News uh, channel on Signal. Uh, I've been in television only about mga two, three years. Uh, prior to that, my background was really in print journalism. I started my career very briefly with the Inquirer, and then I joined a newspaper called Today that is now uh, defunct. Um, and then I've done magazine work, um, and then I've done, uh, I set up interaction.com for TV5. Um, and then I, I went back to newspapers to try to give Business World a digital strategy and along with that social media strategy and so on. And now I'm doing podcasts. That's just my way of uh, a very quick recap of my career just to emphasize that uh, I'd like to think I've tried it all. I've, I've had a little bit of success in, 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 every, in every medium. I've learned a lot. I've also had a lot of failures and a lot of things that still perplex me, especially when it comes to social media. And I really wanted to start with that. And I also wanted to basically prompt you that what I'll be sharing with you is a lot of uh, my own reflections and my own learnings, including my own learnings now in trying to do and promote uh, podcasting and audio content in the Philippines. Okay. Um, I will not, kanina nabanggit ni Professor Lucia, yung inverted pyramid. I'm not going to talk about uh, inverted pyramids. I, uh, the assumption here is everybody understands uh, the basics of, of, uh, of journalism, the basics of news. Uh, but beyond that, what I'd like to share is what, I, uh, what we've learned about the new basics, as I call it, the, the new formats, the new forms, and therefore the new elements of basic storytelling. Um, I'll share my screen. Uh, uh, give me a minute. Uh, okay, share. Can you see? Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Paul. Yes. Paul. Okay. So, okay. So I'll try to. Okay. So if you can see this, this should be in in um, in uh, full screen mode now. So the new basics, the new formats, the new forms and the new elements of storytelling. Uh, I already introduced to you Puma Podcast. Uh, if you're not uh, listening to podcasts yet, I, I really will encourage you. 
Um, but basically, you can find us, Puma Podcast, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Stitcher, or as we say, wherever you find your podcast. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of a sample later. But really, all of my presentation is really going to be about uh, what are we learning beyond the beyond uh, the inverted pyramid and how to tell a story. First is, let's talk about, if we're talking about the new formats, let's talk about the new front page and the new top of the R. Um, uh, the reality is both are no longer really that relevant and both are really quite, uh, quite obsolete. Uh, the front page, uh, social media, uh, Facebook in particular, and before that, uh, Google, uh, really was the front page of our lives and the front page of this new generation. More than 10 years ago, Google News na, di ba? And, and the internet or whatever you wanted to know. And then social media emerged and that became our, our front page. So what people look at right now, the young, the students especially that you're, um, that you're teaching and even their parents, they go straight to Facebook, as you already know, or they go to Twitter, and then mayro pa yung uh, all the new na mas magugulo pa and more perplexing uh, social media that they're on to TikTok among other things and Instagram and so on. So iba na. Uh, that's and, and what's what's different about these platforms is they are not curated by journalists and editors. Uh, what comes out at top of the news or top of the R, quote unquote, would be curated by your friends and, as you've heard, algorithms. When we say algorithms, uh, my personal take on it is it's not really so much that computers are determining what you see first. What you see first are really, if it's not curated by your friends, lumalabas sa feed nyo, it's curated by your biases. Uh, the, com the algorithms, the computers that we keep blaming are a big problem. Uh, we won't get into that. But really what, what, what dictates is, is what the computer can learn of your own biases. And bottom line is this, it's not curated by journalists and editors. And even when it comes to video, appointment television is over. Uh, ABS-CBN, as you all know now, has, uh, has really has no choice but to go all in on, on digital. Uh, they have TV Patrol. They have their strong brands there. But even them now, they, they now have to contend with the reality, as we all are and all have been, that even when you put TV Patrol online, the viewership is, not no, is no longer by appointment because the, the readers already know that they can watch it anytime. More than that, once they click on it, they can fast forward to any particular, you know, so that kills not just the front page, but it also, uh, it also kills the top of the R uh, concept. So now why is this important? It's important because you have to picture what, what our students and their readers, their generation are looking at. Let's take the example of Instagram. Right? They, they don't start with print or text. It is really all about images. That's why I don't really want to talk about the inverted pyramid because when we talk about the inverted pyramid, we're still thinking in the context of text. But the reality is all the media that we, I mentioned right now is driven first and foremost by images. Look at this Instagram account. Not a single word that you can see. No? And ito, Instagram account ng Puma Podcast. No? So we're new and so on. We're audio. But our first interface with our audience has to be graphic, no? has to be pictures. And that really is the first way we have to think about the storytelling. And for that matter, the hook. Our lead paragraph is also obsolete because the lead paragraph as something that will hook not readers but viewers has to be image-based. And we commissioned a study to look at, you know, how, how can we become, you know, more relevant to people who, whose first instinct is to look at not just pictures, but their own pictures, you no? Uh, that, that's their first instinct, no? And, and this is just to illustrate that, uh, not that Instagram is the most influential uh, medium for, uh, most important platform for, our, for kids. It is 
uh, at least not in terms of news, no? but it is in the sense that ito ang unang tinitingnan. For, for young kids, it is cooler than Facebook, it is cooler uh, than Twitter. Uh, uh, kasalanan din to ng, uh, it, this is also a consequence of educators because Facebook, more than anything now, is a platform for education. That's where they collaborate, that's where our kids collaborate. So it, and so it's not necessarily the cool thing for them. Instagram is. Now, hindi naman sa pagpipilitan natin, but that's the question. If you're a content developer, how do we get in? In other words, even us, we're struggling. How do we get how do we try to find space in that? No? How do we become part of the feed? And one of the things that uh, marketing studies show us is you have to convince not an editor, but you have to convince the people who own their own Instagram profiles, which is everyone. And the question is no longer, are you, worth, are you newsworthy? No? The question is, are you worthy? In other words, kung pangit yung unang image mo, even if your story is beautiful, even if your story is compelling and important, kids do not want to post it on their Instagram pages because masisira yung Instagram page nila. No? Masisira yung layout, na, yung pagkaganda-ganda na, na, na feed no? that is very important to young, to young kids and to Gen Zs and for that matter to millennials. So that's the question. Yung ginagawa nyo ng mga images, is it worthy of my curation, of my artistic taste, of my aesthetic taste? And ang layo pa natin in talking about editorial content. But this is where the story has to begin. The good news for all of us is once you get on that feed and beyond that, the medium remains the message. No? Um, so it's, we have to just tell ourselves and remind ourselves that, that as we say, the medium is the message. Hindi pwedeng pare-pareho. For newspapers, fine. Inverted pyramid, follow that. Continue to follow that. But for, for, for broadcasting, as you'll hear later from, from the speakers, of course, there's a different form of storytelling. And for audio, as we're learning, there's a different form of storytelling. And for that matter, there's a difference between storytelling for podcasts and storytelling for live AM and FM, which is what we're all used to. Video remains the most powerful, among other things, that is good news for us in the sense that we can understand what that means. Social media is, first and foremost, a visual medium. So even Twitter has to be treated as a visual medium. Audio, and I'll get into this later, is the least distracted and the most immersive. Right now, it has one of the smaller audiences. But the advantage of pure audio is it's it is the least distracted and the most immersive. Now, what does that mean? YouTube, for example, very immersive, but you are constantly distracted. Nanunood ka ng YouTube and you're constantly, you constantly have your finger on your phone because alam mong habang nanunood ka, you can search for the new, the new video or what's going to come up next and so on. And for that matter, habang nanunood ka, you can pick up your phone, go to Google, go to Facebook, and so on. You're constantly distracted. But audio, podcasting, is completely passive. I'll get into that later. Text is the most important for reach, discovery, archiving, research, and as a medium of record. So nandun pa rin yung importance even of newspapers and for that matter, the digital uh, uh, extension of newspapers. And here's the thing. Sa lahat ng sinabi ko, itong huli most likely is the one that we all fully understand and fully grasp. Di ba? Text is the most important for reach, discovery, archiving, research, and as a medium of record. And this is the only thing we all still understand or still authorities on. Everything else above, video remains most powerful, social media is a visual medium more than anything, audio is least distracted. The reality is, notwithstanding this presentation, it is your students, it is your students and our students who are actually the experts in the first three points I made. We are experts and we are teachers really only when it comes to this last point. Okay? With everything else, it's the students who can teach us better and they will teach you better than I can in this session.
Now, I hope you heard that uh, audio. Uh, I just wanted to explain a little bit about audio. Now, what I let you do, I, what I, and this goes back to the point that medium remains the message. I think of, of all the media and of all the new forms of storytelling, podcasting is one of the newest ones. I won't promote it, but I'll just show you how, because it's a new medium, it's a different medium, it has to come with a different form of storytelling, and it has to come with different elements. And it also shows you that the inverted pyramid is totally irrelevant to this, to this point, in terms of having the most important ele uh, the most important angle and so on. Walang angle, angle dito. You're thinking in terms, rather, of elements. So you can still apply the inverted pyramid principle, but basically thinking of it as not putting the most important information at the very top, but rather putting the most important element on top. And when it comes to podcasting, of course, the most important element is audio. So I'll just give you a sample. And you'll see how different it is as well. Oh, no, no. So the first story is a science story. It is about a very rare bird that was found in the Philippines. And in text format, that's how you will, you will probably write it. A very rare bird has been found in the Philippines. But in audio, the storytelling has to be very different, as you'll see here. May sila For in the future. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Huh? Let me remind Now, the push to ban settlements in Tal Island. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> that is the sound of the blue-winged pita. And for ornithologists and birders in the Philippines, it's a pretty big deal. Now, to be clear, this recording you're hearing was taken in Thailand, and we're borrowing it from the database of bird watching website Zeno Canto. Nobody has a recording of the blue winged pita here in the Philippines because, well, for the longest time, we have not seen one here. Early last year, however, naturalist and conservationist René Vignola spotted an unusual bird foraging in a wildlife sanctuary called Liptong Woodland in Bakum, Negros Oriental. She posted the picture on Facebook and birders soon identified it as a blue-winged pita. Birder Amado Baharia cites literature which says that this species was recorded only twice in the Philippines, in Palawan in January 1898 and then in Basilan in February 1907. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll pause it there. Um, and you can see that in, in the pure audio storytelling where we have no visual cues, at all. When we say the medium remains the message, we have to start teaching our kids and our students what are the different elements beyond even pure textual information or even pure visual information. And that's what we have to keep emphasizing. For every, for every uh, new medium, you cannot just transpose what you learned by way of text editing or even video editing. You cannot even just take video content, strip out the audio, and then post it online and ayan na, podcast na yan. Because it totally misses out on a lot of context. Very often, the presenter will refer to, look at that bird or whatever, and nobody's seeing any bird. So if the medium is audio, then audio has to be the most important element and so on. So how does that apply to uh, another story? Here's a story about after Taal uh, erupted. And we wanted to do a story about, because my proposal ang DILG to move people out of Taal Island. So how would that sound? How, what would be the treatment for that um, in audio? And here's what we came up with. For in the future. 
Now, the push to ban settlements in Tal Island is not new. To be more accurate, it is old. Since the 16th century, Taal has erupted more than 30 times. Each time, the scenes described and captured look very familiar. One challenge remains the same. Ominous rumblings from the Taal volcano south of Manila lead to a general alert and the evacuation of families living nearby. Minor eruptions send steam, rock, and mud into the air while geologists and tourists keep close watch. That newsreel report was from 1967. Take note, covering a relatively minor eruption that came after a bigger explosion in 1965. Here's the report from that more disastrous episode. Above Lake Tal this week, a pillar of smoke and flame and steam. It mushroomed at one time 10,000 feet into the air, a funeral pyre for hundreds of Filipino villagers and fishing families. Most were trapped in their beds. The scenes captured are familiar. Ash blankets the ground. Dead animals are half buried. Farmers flee. In another scene, some return to salvage belongings. They hope to return. But again, even then, the recommendations too were the same. Soon after the disaster, when it was feared that fresh eruptions were imminent, the government stopped people returning, and police put the island out of bounds. But some defied the order and the still smoking volcano, seeking to salvage what they could from their shattered homes. Okay, so I hope you heard that, but you see the, how, how different it is. Now, wala kaming video, we knew we couldn't put any video, it's pure audio. So how do you convey that this is an old issue. So part of the storytelling is, is basically to let people hear them uh, even before the information comes in. You could hear from the style, you could hear from the static, you could hear from the very traditional radio voice. That is, this is very, very old. Even before the, you say that this is from 1967, 1965, the very element conveys how old and how archival this is. Um, at the same time, because there is no visual cue, we describe the scene. And very often, you know, it can be actually counterintuitive to what we teach our, our, uh, our, our, our children, because we say, you know, show, don't, uh, show, don't tell. But Dito, in this case, it's actually very important to, to spell it out. And it actually becomes much more powerful because audio, a, a, one advantage of audio is because you're not seeing any scenes and television is not showing you, ito yan, ito yung nangyari, ito yung itsura. You're painting the scene in your head. If you listen back, for example, you've seen all the eruptions of Taal, all the pictures and videos of Taal. You never actually heard the eruption. But that sound of that eruption is very powerful in a pure audio because it sounds so big and I have no idea how big that explosion was in your mind. The point is the medium remains the message and we have to start teaching the kids what literally that means, which is for every platform, for every medium, whether it's visual, text, picture, audio, video, and so on, there's a different way of storytelling, and the inverted pyramid will not always apply. The other thing that we learn is that multimedia is now basic journalism. When I was in college, basic journalism was that. Text, the inverted pyramid, who, went, who what, when, where, why, and so on. Um, people needed for information and so on. But nowadays, it, you would be doing your students as, as a former executive, as former editor-in-chief, of newspapers, online news, and now in, uh, as somebody on television, I can tell you, you, are, you will be doing your, your journalists, your future journalists, a disservice. If you try to teach them as, ano bang gusto mo mangyari? Gusto mo bang mag-newspaper? Gusto mo bang mag -radio? Gusto mo bang mag-podcast? You have to start off by telling them, doesn't matter what you want to be, you have to learn all the different platforms. What was advanced for us? and what was specialization for us 
is not, should now be basic for everybody. Video, social media, audio, text, images, all of this they have to learn. But here's the thing. As teachers, kayo, you cannot teach what you do not practice. And you cannot be an authority where you are not a fan. This is particularly true for Twitter. This is particularly true for Instagram. And for that matter, this is particularly true for TikTok. I know the reaction of a lot of old journalists and, uh, and teachers is that, ano ba naman to? Sinisira na naman nila ang journalism. Nasisira ang ano, and people are not reading news, and so, and so on and so forth. But there really is no point, if you ask me, in trying to fight that fight. The reality is this is their world. This is the world that they will inherit. They communicate primarily to, ano, you look at the memes that go out. Tawan-tawa sila lahat, and yet there are no words. And if you cannot learn to speak that language, we will lose our students. And if we cannot speak that language, and if we, do, we cannot speak that language, if we do not practice that language, if you're not on Twitter, if you're not on Instagram, you cannot teach it. Not to say that that's hopeless, because there is hope, even if you really don't want to be on Twitter. Now, here's an example. I just wanted to show this. You remember uh, Kim Wong, yung nag-testify doon sa Bangladesh heist, yung nawalan ng ano. Basta this is the, the junket operator nung panahon na may nawalang pera sa, sa Bangladesh and they ended up in the Philippines and so on. Uh, I happen to know the people, the lawyers, uh, and for that matter, the communicators who handled uh, Kim Wong's uh, statement uh, before the Senate. His original uh, background, lato, his original statement, I know, was supposed to be 20 pages long. And if you remember anything about Kim Wong, this is a Filipino Chinese. He couldn't speak straight Filipino. He couldn't even speak, speak straight English. And the people who handle this communication, these are not journalists, but these are people who are on Twitter. They said, Eh si Kim Wong, hindi nga makabasa ng isang sentence diretso, papabasahin niya ng 20 pages. So they came back with basically a six-sentence outline. Six-sentence outline. The lawyers were in an uproar. Ang dami-dami natin gustong sabihin. The communicators won because they basically said, eto, six lang. It starts with, wala akong kinalaman dyan. No? Wala akong kinalaman dyan. Hindi ko alam kung saan nanggaling ang 81 million. Yung 81 million nanggaling kay ganito. And the final sentence was, handa na po akong sagutin lahat ng tanong nyo. And here's what won it for the communicators over the lawyers. The communicator said, oo, kulang lahat to kung kaya, kailangan, kaya nga sasagutin niya lahat. But more importantly, the six sentences, tweetable. That's what won it. That's what won that argument. Because every sentence was tweetable. And, you, and not only that, if you've ever tried to live tweet, if you've ever tried to cover a Senate hearing, the reporters will tell you that's the main problem. We cannot keep up with everything that's being said. Tweet kami ng tweet. You have no time to look up. You have no time to provide context and so on. But because they just boiled it down to six sentences, every sentence with a breather in between was tweetable. And in the next day and in the next hours, every single sentence became the important headline. His only message was, wala akong kinalaman dyan, hindi ko lang kung saan ang galing. And sinagot ko lahat ng tanong nyo. And that allowed him to, to be there. It's the kind of sensibility that you have to embrace. When we're teaching our kids, how do you report? Because the, whether you like it or not, everything right now has to be boiled down to something that people can digest very easily. And that's because this is become, becoming very, very important. Now, what do we teach our kids? You look at a typical feed, and this is just one, one particular story about, uh, or, or, or this is a number of stories that people are covering on Twitter. And what we, what we, as an editor, what I've learned is that wealth of context is more important than mastery of words. When I started with interaction, I started with a team of veteran journalists. 
And I said, we all have to learn Twitter. And we realized that we are all so caught up in our old ways that our concern was accuracy. Our concern was context. But we didn't understand Twitter. And we couldn't get any, any traction. Until finally, within one year, I was so frustrated with our Twitter that I turned it around and I said, alam mo, lahat ng kinakatakutan natin, wrong spelling, wrong grammar, wrong context, misidentified people, uh, mali ang background, um, and so on. Lulunokin natin yan. We will apologize for every mistake we make, but the, the, the number one mistake we made was to think that our old journalists can master Twitter. Balik ta rin natin. Let the young kids handle Twitter. Let them make the mistakes. Let them teach them in real time about context, about news. Let's try to deepen their understanding of news and history in real time. And lulunokin natin and we will apologize for mistakes. But it does not work the other way around. It is not that you can teach the old dogs new tricks about how to master a new social medium and then rely on their historical context and news context to make sure that we don't make any mistakes. It doesn't work that way. It's better to leave it to the kids and then find a way to teach them the larger context, the wider and the deeper context that they have to embrace. And hopefully, everything will work out. And they don't always work out. You just have to fall back on being honest. But in the meantime, those kids from more than uh, 13 years ago, they did learn. And they are now the veteran journalists. And now they can uh, tweet in real time, they can post in real time, and they can instantly provide context. Among journalists and government right now in terms of context, one of the hardest problems is really a lot of kids not being able to understand data and statistics. And this is, I think, should be part of the new basics. Innumeracy is more dangerous than illiteracy, frankly. Data and statistics are more important subjects for me, if you ask me, than basic news writing. Wrong grammar is wrong grammar. A misspelled word is a misspelled word. I have no problem with that. But when you provide the wrong context to data, it is much more dangerous. Uh, the two examples you see below, one is clearly uh, not understanding what inflationary means. Um, and the other one is not understanding what trend line means. Uh, I'm not even fairly confident, and this is not to disparage anyone, but it's just the truth. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Now, even for myself, even for my editors, not everybody knows what a trend line is. But this is the kind of information that was put, uh, put out by the, by the PCOO. And it's the kind of information that young kids will, 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 will fall for only because it was put out by, by, uh, by, official, uh, by officials. No? But they don't understand what inflationary means. They don't understand what trend line means. And we as journalists and educators, we don't actually invest enough in enough units of math and data and statistics. That has to be there. Um, okay. So just to catch up, uh, just to recap uh, my main points. Teachers, we have to catch up with our students, especially when it comes to social media, in, especially when it comes to visual communication, in, especially in terms of understanding the new platforms. They're way ahead of us. And that's just a reality. There's no way parents uh, can be ahead of the game uh, than their children. It's just a reality. Second, you cannot teach what you do not practice. So you have to be on social media. At the very least, you have to, uh, no. you cannot lead if you do not follow. And by follow, I mean you do have to follow YouTubers. You do have to follow um, uh, Twitter accounts. You do have to follow people on TikTok. Uh, but find the ones that are most relevant and that are trying to tell news and information. You will be surprised uh, beyond ABS-CBN, GMA, Rappler, Inquirer. If you just search for youth on YouTube for Filipinos who will teach you about technology, 
they are getting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views of your students. And those YouTubers are telling stories much more effectively than our professional journalists. So don't be a fate, don't be a hater of social media, be a fan. And finally, let the students teach. I imagine in your classes, it will be much more engaging if from time to time you take a seat back and you tell your students, sige nga, kayo nga magturo sa akin, bakit ba kayo lukong-luko sa TikTok? Bakit ba kayo lukong-luko sa Instagram? Bakit ba kayo lukong-luko sa Twitter? Uh, and so on. And then let's ask them, how do you think we should reformat news? How do you think we should implement news? What can we do that you will actually follow a news organization and so on? And this is still a mystery for all editors. And this is still a gold mine if we only we knew what the answer is. But the answer certainly lies not with us. The answer lies with the digital natives who are right there and who are not even thinking about it. They just know what works. So that's it for me. Maraming salamat po, and I'll be happy to take your questions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, how do I, okay, stop here. And thank you so much, Sir Robbie Alampay, for that, I can say, awakening presentation for Thanks for reminding us to adapt to the new normal and catch up with the trend. So, meron din pong mga comments sa Facebook live stream natin. And allow me to read them. Um, meron from Sir Robert Mariel Villaluna. Sabi niya po, yes, I agree. Learn using Twitter kahit po kami sa media. Doon ang unang salang ng headline real-time as it is bago pa isunod ang body. Large networks and newspaper rely on Twitter sa real-time news update. So, um, for the questions po, I posted um, separate ano, post if you have questions for Sir Roby. So, meron pong first question from Adam Renz Sulaga. Good morning, Sir Robbie. May I ask if a public broadcaster is still government-owned? What's the difference between public and private broadcaster? Uh, well, ano po yan? Uh, there are actually three things in my mind on how I categorize it. No? There's private, no? um, and then there is state-owned and state media, and then there is public broadcasting. Uh, so private and public malinaw naman uh, public let's say public and uh, state owned malinaw naman yung difference no so sa so private uh, uh, pribadong sector it's businessmen it's an it's investors who who run it uh, they are not and should not be beholden to government and then dun sa mga pagmamayari ng estado and uh, that's it's not owned by government it's owned by the people dalawa yan there are there is state media which is uh, what we have uh, ptv4 yung mga radio stations natin uh, and so on and these are literally and this is not to uh, to put any judgment on it it's it's just a reality those are are government mouthpieces no they really are there to 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 really uh, uh, give weight to what government wants to say Yung gumigit na doon, yung tinatawag natin na public uh, media and public broadcasting in particular. Uh, it's a, uh, the, the gold standard for this is something like BBC, for example, where linili now na this is owned by the state, it's owned by the people. BBC works, for example, by getting a tax uh, because it's such an old law that funds them it gets a, a, a piece of bawat radio at bawat television set na mabebenta. May, may tax yun. And that uh, uh, piece of fund is earmarked, is dedicated to funding the BBC. And what that allows BBC to do is to be owned by the people but not operated by government. No? And dahil garantisado yung budget niya, dahil nanggagaling sa sales ng TV and radio yung budget niya, eh hindi siya takot every year 
na mag-present ng budget sa Congress, alimbawa, or sa Parliament in the case of the UK. And therefore, it can afford to be independent in its editorial content. So yun po yung pagkakaiba. No? Uh, state-owned media, state-operated media, which is what we have, uh, it really is uh, run and operated and, let's face it, beholden to public interest. Private, ganun din. And let's face it, let's be honest also, uh, private media is also beholden to private interest. No? They try to be independent the, within the newsroom, uh, jour professional journalists, I daily try to be independent, even if it comes at the expense, for example, of their own investors. But public broadcasting and public media tries to straddle that in between, tries to have the best of both worlds, where you have guaranteed funds from the public. At the same time, you have editorial independence because precisely those funds are, are already guaranteed and, and earmarked. Hindi siya kailangan magmakaawa sa Kongreso. Uh, uh, for anything, not for the franchise, not for the fees, not for the budget, and so on. So, yun po yung pagkakaiba. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Robbie. Um, another question from Renz Kevin Mendoza Alcazar from Facebook live stream po natin. Uh, uh, thanks, Sir Alampay. Truly, we see the rising popularity of podcasts. Can you share, Sir, how do you plan your podcast and what are your important pointers in making one do you also use a specific software or app in creating a podcast yes okay let's start with the basic one uh, mm -hmm. we'll, let's start with the last question madaling madali lang i mean everything you have on your smartphone is powerful enough to start a podcast the microphone is already uh, very good just some basic things uh, on how to record do you need a studio? Uh, not really. Um, uh, when we started, uh, and mahanap nyo to sa YouTube. No? So, if you want to start, go to YouTube, how do you podcast, and daming videos, how, how to do it. But if you need a studio, pumasok ka lang sa cabinet mo na maraming, maraming, uh, maraming damit all around you. That's enough to muffle and to take away all the echo uh, around you. So, that's a pro tip yan. Pwede ka rin mag-record sa taas ng kama mo magtaklub ka ng magtaklub ka ng makapal na makapal mainit sa loob pero pagtiyagan mo but the sound quality is already um, uh, very good basically you're trying to avoid hard surfaces um, and so on now how do we plan stories uh, same as any uh, newsroom we have editors but we do have a different uh, value set on what we think is good first uh, we are anti-breaking. We, we don't follow breaking news. That's a function both of the format and also a function of how small our newsroom is. You know? But even if our newsroom were big, the real value of podcasts, as I said, is it is undistracted. It is unhurried conversation, as Randy David, for whose podcast we, we, we produce. Um, and therefore, yung breaking news is sort of counterintuitive to what we're trying to achieve. So ang assumption namin, pagka nag, pagka nag uh, editorial meeting kami for a podcast, ang assumption namin is, alam na to ng makikinig. Walang bago sa maririnig nila. Take the example of that Taal story. You already know the story. The ILG, the government wants to move people out of Taal Island. So ang tanong namin is, where do we come in on, in that conversation because we can't come in in the sense of being una sa balita. Actually, ang gusto namin, huli kami sa balita, but we want to have the final word. In terms of the experience we want and the reaction that we want to get from people is, ay, naintindihan ko pala yun. Parang, alam ko na yun eh. Di ba? Alam ko na yun, and yet, meron akong mas naintindihan na mas malalim. And mas nag-enjoy ako in taking this one thing. The other thing we do when we brainstorm is, as we always say, traditional media will try to go wide. No? It will try to go wide. Palabas yung storya. They're trying to show that, alam ko yung aspeto nito sa economics, alam ko yung political, alam ko yung personal background nitong taong to. I'll give you the historical background and uh, I'll even give you the timeline of how all of this happened. Ang podcast can't go wide. 
Ang hirap sundan ng storya. So what we do is we go deep. No? So don't go wide, you go deep. And by going deep, going deep means you choose just one angle. Isa lang. Hindi ko pag-uusapan yung history, hindi ko pag-uusapan yung personalities involved, hindi ko pag-uusapan yung timeline, hindi ko pag-uusapan yung economics nito. Pipili lang ako ng isa doon. And then you show your expertise by going deep into that one angle. So those are the different ways. I mean, it still applies to what I said about the medium is the message. You have to understand what the weakness of the medium is. In this case, ang weakness ng podcast, for example, uh, numbers don't work. You cannot keep, you know, you cannot keep reciting numbers. People will not be able to follow it. You cannot. You have to round down statistics. You can't have. You can't say that the growth rate was 3.247. No, you can't do that. You have to round it down. And finally, people can only handle so much information, mm -hmm. but they can follow you as you go deep. It's hard when you try to tell a story going wide. Okay, thank you so much for that, Sir Robbie. Um, another question from anonymous attendee in our webinar: How can we encourage the gatekeepers of legacy media to embrace the fluidity of digital media practices? What did you, uh, what you did with interaction is novel, but I'm sure there was a resistance. How did you handle that? Uh, well, uh, I just said it and they had no choice because none of us had any choice. Uh, what really drove it was really uh, audience. Uh, we were seeing that uh, we were too slow in Twitter. We were seeing that it was not uh, working. And in the meantime, uh, the young people in our staff uh, were giving us direct feedback. This is why it's not working and so on. I don't, I wouldn't worry about um, how do we convince newsrooms to embrace it? As akin, they either embrace it or they die, or they become irrelevant. And we all know that, especially as we're talking about private media. Private media is, is self-incentivized to, to understand and embrace these things. And I really don't know any newsroom right now that has not embraced this insight, that it's better to just hand off to young people um, and then grow with them. Uh, let them learn it um, and then let them teach us uh, how to do it. And then, but more fundamentally, uh, I think for every newsroom, the, the lesson also is you have to invest in young people. You have to bring in younger people into the newsroom, uh, let the old make way for the, for the young. Um, because the storytelling really is, is so different in the, the platforms and the formats. You cannot keep mastering every single thing. Um, you just have to let the kids uh, show you the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sir, can we accommodate more questions? Uh, two questions lang po. Sure, okay. sure. From, from J.D. Monk, are the structural elements of storytelling for the visual the same with for podcasting? Mm. Uh, no. Um, ibang iba. Well, the, in terms of elements, obviously, uh, something is not there. The video is not there. The images are not there. You do have podcasts um, that take the audio and then they were layer on. Mm -hmm. After ma producing audio uh, and lumabas na yung podcast, they, you do see podcasts that will layer on images and videos, and then they'll put the podcast uh, on YouTube diba? and on Facebook. You know? That still works. Diba? Um, but doing it the other way around does not work. You know? So Dito, podcast, then you layer on the, the video and the images and so on. Uh, that works. But a video, if you start with the video and the audio layered on to each other, and then just take away the, the video, no? and then leave the audio, and then post it as a podcast. Baliktad. It doesn't work. Um, because you will have a lot of visual cues that is no longer referenced here in the audio. So those are the things that are different. Uh, the elements that I said, so video, uh, you see this in broadcast networks, numbers work. 
no? because you can talk about numbers and you can flash the numbers on the screen and the brain can handle both at the same time. Sa audio, numbers lang and you're just reciting the numbers. You cannot, you cannot recite an Excel spreadsheet. You cannot recite a table. Diba? So there are certain elements that are very, very different. And so in, 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 in audio, obviously, uh, medium is the message, audio is king. And so when we do the, the, the uh, storyboarding and the story conference, as it were, part of what we ask, apart from what, uh, anong angulo ang value add natin, anong pwede nating pasukan na story dito on the assumption that people already know the story, is part of that is the discussion of ano bang audio element ang kaya nating hanapin. So in that, in that example, for example, of Taal, we knew that we could find old archival newsreels of Taal Volcano from 1965 to 1967. Uh, in that example of the bird, we, that, that story of the bird, it came out in the Inquirer as a half-page picture of the bird. And then it came out in... Uh, in video, in broadcast, because pinick up na mga jario dun sa social media post nung nakakita. So nanda yung picture, di ba? So kami audio, tanong namin, ano, ano pa madadagdag natin dyan? Hindi naman natin mapapakita yung picture ng bird. But we said, can we actually find audio of that bird? And sure enough, we asked some bird nerds, some birders, and they said, ah, tari lang yan. Go to this website, there's a database of bird sounds. And that's right. People have seen the picture. They've read the story that this bird has not been seen here in more than 100 years. But they haven't heard it. So, doon lang kami papasok sa anggulong yan. Okay. Thank you so much, Sir Robbie. Um, last question from... Uh, Leo Lapara, desk editor of Philippine Star, who also teaches journalism at University of Santo Tomas. So, education officials have been pushing for the use of radio, among other platforms or media, in blended learning in the coming school year. So, what is the main difference between the classic radio broadcast and the more modern podcast? What could be the foremost advantage of using podcasts over broadcasting through radio as part of teaching? Ah, okay. Well, one, I'm not an education expert. Um, uh, this is a concern for all of us, uh, not even as journalists, but as parents. Uh, I really don't know how they're going to do that. Uh, I can imagine it being effective, and we, I do pray that it is effective, and I think we all should do our part in trying to, as storytellers especially, how do we help the kids, especially with no access to the internet, and kung ito lang ang paasahan nila, how do we make it more more effective. Um, so I don't know the answer to that uh, as an educator. How do, we, how do we use it? But as a storyteller, I'll tell you the difference between podcasts and, uh, and radio and audio content as we find it here in the Philippines. The main difference is actually boiled down to just one thing, production, specifically post-production. So narinig niyo yung pinarinig ko sa sa about that bird the blue winged pita and yung pinarinig ko about uh, Taal volcano no? and you you probably couldn't put your finger on it on bakit iba yan doon sa naririnig natin sa AM and FM the only difference is the time spent on pre-production production and post-production what does that mean? Post-production, we take the time to reorganize our thoughts. We take the time to, to, to lay out the story ahead of time. We take the time to layer on music, if it helps, to layer on ambient sound, if it helps, um, uh, and to layer on voiceover uh, on top of the sound, if it helps. No? Um, so you could imagine, for example, the bird. If this was just being reported on AM and FM, ganun lang, di ba? Oh, may nakitang ibon dun sa ano, nakakatawa naman, mata isang daang taon na raw di nakikita ang ibon na yan dito and so on. 
But because it's live, the anchors literally have no time and no resource and probably had no time to even research na mahanap ba natin yung audio na yan. Di ba? So that's where post-production comes in. Now, what does this mean for education and using radio? I would think na kung gagamitin na lang natin din yung, yung radio to teach our kids, I would hope that because the curriculum is pre-planned, we might as well produce the curricula as best as we could. No? And then try to ask storytellers, for example, how do we teach history? Diba? How do we teach history through audio? How do we teach math through audio? I don't know. I'm not an educator. But kung wala tayong visual cue, can we do audio cues to teach one plus one equals two? I don't know. It's just a very basic example. Diba? But the point is, the medium is the message. And therefore, we have to take that medium seriously and for everything that can, it can teach us. I mentioned history. We have a history podcast called WhatsApp. What's AP? No? What's AP? What's Araling Panlipunan, basically? What's app? And if you go to, uh, to Spotify and search for WhatsApp, we have, I think, about six or seven or eight episodes already where we, where we take the audience through a moment in time. We layer on music, we layer on sound elements from that particular period, we layer on news reels from that particular period. You have two people um, engaging each other in a conversation. And it is a, I, it is a much more powerful experience for our kids, I would imagine. Let's say sa radio, meron silang subject in history. Than a teacher just reading from a book or lecturing uh, blindly to an audience that is not in front of him or her. No? So, yun lang. I wish I, I, I knew what the answer is, but I do know part of the answer is the medium is the message. If we're going to use pure audio, hopefully some research also went in into how do we tell these stories and how do we teach these lessons if it, kung, kung wala tayong choice, audio lang ang gagamitin natin. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Robbie, for, for sharing your time and knowledge with us. Do you have any...